everyone today. My name's Eric. I really appreciate you stopping by to check out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make chicken and dumplings in the slow cooker. Now those of you familiar with my uh, YouTube channel or my website know that the majority of my videos have to do with smoking, grilling, and barbecuing food as well as sous vide cooking. But I also love to use my slow cooker and it's a great thing if you have a busy family and you're all out of the house all day, you can throw all the ingredients in the morning and come home to a delicious meal. This is real basic here. I saw, found this recipe online several years ago and of course I modified it a little bit and I think I have a really good meal here to share with you. Of course you're going to need chicken, uh, chicken breasts, or you can use a whole chicken or chicken pieces, whatever you got. The other great thing about this recipe is you don't necessarily need fresh chicken. I bought this big bag of frozen chicken breast and the great thing about the slow cooker, throw everything in frozen and it'll cook uh, over the course of the day when you have it on low all day. I'm going to add some onions, some celery, some carrots. I have some um, chicken broth, the low sodium as I usually do. I got uh, three cans of cream of chicken and one can of cream of celery. I got some corn and some green beans I'm going to save towards the last part of the cook. And then rather than mixing flour and making a dumpling, I found an excellent way that's almost as good as making homemade. And that's by using some of these uh, biscuit dough that you find in your grocer's freezer, which you can uh, rip into pieces and throw in there at the end and let it cook for an additional hour or so. Real simple recipe, real delicious. You're really going to be impressed. Stay tuned, I'll show you how to make this dish step by step. Let's get cooking. All right, so now we just put everything in the crock pot. What I got here is around five frozen chicken breast. Now I have a very big slow cooker as you can see. It's a full seven quart, so if you have a smaller one, most of them I think are around five quart, uh, adjust accordingly. I always like to make as much as possible in such a big crock pot because leftovers are great. So I put the chicken breast in the, on the bottom. Now what I have here, I have one small onion. I have around three or four stalks of uh, celery chopped up and some carrots. And on top I have two tablespoons of butter. So we're going to pour that on top of the chicken. And now we're going to add the soup. Now, definitely cream of chicken soup. I would not use cream of mushroom. It's going to change the flavor. This is, after all, chicken and dumplings. So I use the regular uh, Campbell's cream of chicken. Any cream of chicken will do. Uh, normally, if you're just doing a smaller crock pot, you might only need two cans or three, depending. I always like adding one can of cream of celery just to change it up a little bit, add some different flavors, but that's up to you. So we're going to put in three cans of the cream of chicken and then the one can of the cream of celery. I just kind of pour it so the top of all this chicken and vegetables is covered. Okay. Oh, I think my dog's chasing a fly around the kitchen. <laughs> Alright, and then the last thing, we're going to put some chicken broth in there. Now I always go for the low sodium because my rule when I'm cooking with salting stuff is always go for the low sodium stuff because once it's all done you can taste it, you can always add salt, but if you add too much you can never take it away. So there's no exact measurements here that I'm going to give you. Use your best judgment. It doesn't matter if it's a little liquidy because once we put that uh, the, the biscuit dough in there, uh, a lot of that's going to soak up a lot of the juice. And if it gets too liquidy, we can always thicken it up with some flour or cornstarch. So pour in a good amount of some chicken stock. And like I said, no salt at this point. I just got some fresh ground pepper I'm going to put on the top here. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this, well, you know what, normally if I was going to work, I would set this on low, obviously. 
But since I'm going to be home today, I'm going to go ahead and sit it on high, at least for the first couple hours, just to get it up to a nice little simmer. Then I'll kick it down to low. And we'll be back in a few hours to check it out from there. So we'll see you in a, see you in a couple hours. Let's see here. Put it on high. Boy, I'm looking forward to this. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, it's been around two hours. I just want to show you guys I haven't uh, lifted a lid or anything. I just wanted to check it. Ooh, we got some steam. We're starting to get a mild simmer here, which is uh, perfect. That was my intention. I'm keeping it on high. I'll give it a quick little stir. Everything looks like it's coming together nicely. The chicken breast definitely looks like it's well on its way to be cooked because they were frozen solid. That's why I had it on high. <clears throat> but now I'm going to turn it on low and we'll let it continue to cook for several more hours. It's looking good. We'll be back in a little bit. Alright, here we are. It's been seven hours, two hours on high and five hours on low. At this point, whew, by the way, my son came home from school and said, man, I don't know what it is. It smells great in here. So he's looking excited to this too. Alright, so at this point you want to take the chicken breast pieces out. They should be fully cooked. We just want to shred them a little bit because obviously I want this more like a chicken stew. So just put them out here, just take a fork, and you'll see they shred quite easily. Now you don't have to go, you know, crazy. Just, just uh, do it like that, and when you put it back in, the juice in there is going to soak up in this chicken. It's going to be so delicious. So let me finish uh, getting all this chicken out, getting it all shredded up, and I'll show you the next step in just a second. Alright, so I'm done shredding all the chicken here. Once it's all done, we're just going to put it all back into the slow cooker. This is going to absorb some really nice flavors now. Just be careful because it's going to be hot. You don't want to splash it. So just take it easy, moving all that chicken in. Now what you want to do now too, this is kind of uh, showing you what to do if you did cook it all day in the slow cooker. Let's say you just got home from work. First thing you want to do, obviously, if you had it on low all day, it's going to be in a similar situation or consistency, I guess, of how this is right now. So you're just going to do that. You're going to take out the chicken. You're going to shred it. Now you're going to put it back in the slow cooker. You're going to stir it really good. Oh, now it's looking great. Almost looks like a, definitely like a chicken stew. So now what you want to do, because we're going to get ready to add some vegetables that are frozen. I, I waited till the last minute to put those in because they're already cooked. They only take eight, nine minutes usually uh, simmering to warm up. I don't want them to turn to mush. So I'm going to wait right literally to the end to put those in. But right now you want to crank it up to high again. And now you want to get it nice and hot because when we and a little bit more simmering because we're going to cut up the biscuit dough and we're going to put it in there. And if you put it on high, it's going to make that dough cook a little bit quicker and cook a little bit more thoroughly. So put it on high, give it eh, 20 minutes to 40 minutes, you know, maybe a half hour. Just keep the lid on it. We'll be back in a second when I show you what to do with those uh, biscuit dough and how to get them in there to make our dumplings. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, you know what time it is, guys. While we're waiting for that to heat up, we're going to do a beer review. This one caught my attention for the name, Kilt Lifter. Scottish style ale from Four Peaks Brewing Company out of Arizona, 6% alcohol. So there you go. Saw that in the store, never heard of it, never tried it. So, had to guess. <laughs> Let's see here. Ooh, it's dark. Very nice. Nice dark, kind of copper color. This is a bigger. Uh, bigger container so I'm going to have a little extra as always I really appreciate you guys watching my video feel free to leave comments or suggestions I try to read and answer every single one of them cheers okay a little bit of toasted malt ever so slightly fruit not too strong so compared to other beers Maybe a little bit caramel. Definitely I can smell it's a little bit heavier than what I'm used to. Mmm. Oh, it's a little bit fruitier than that than it smells. Definitely 
Got the fruity bite in the beginning. And it's a little sweet. Tastes like maybe honey, caramel. Oh, it's very pleasant. I don't taste any of that hop bitterness that you usually experience. It's very smooth. Wow, it's very good for 6% alcohol. It's got a little bit of a heavier feel. It's definitely medium bodied, medium carbonation. It's very decent. Mmm. But it does have a little bit of that sweet kick. I don't know how it's going to feel when I'm at the end of this big can. That might end up bothering me. I, I, like, I don't like too sweet, but we'll see. I'll give you an update. But anyway, very good. So we're just going to give this thing, while I enjoy my beer, we'll give this another 15-20 minutes just to get up to, I turned it on high, get it up to a nice simmer, and we'll put that uh, the dumplings in there. They're going to probably need to cook anywhere from, I would guess on the early end, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you know, and you definitely want to have your slow cooker on high when you do that. So I'll finish this beer. We'll be back in a few minutes. I'll show you the next step. Cheers. All right, so I've had it up on high whoop, for around a half hour. So I just want to show you here the consistency, how it should look like. Oh, it looks great. It smells great. I got a little liquidy, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to add here, and this is optional. It's ready to go pretty much. You can put the dough in, make the biscuits. I'm putting half a bag of some uh, frozen green peas and what we call this chuck horn, chuck wagon corn, which is corn with onions and peppers in it. So you can see here, I'm on a half a bag of each. I'm going to pour that in there just to give it a little bit of different color and a little bit different flavor, make it a little bit more hearty. We'll stir that in real quick. And this, and this doesn't take long to cook, just a few minutes, but you can see, one of the reasons I say turn it up on high, you can see how the simmering stopped almost instantly when I poured this frozen stuff in. That's fine. Put the lid on it while we cut up the biscuits. Now what you're going to do here, you get these, this is from Pillsbury, they're the biscuit dough. There's other brands, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, endorsing this one, but that's what they had at the store. So you take these biscuits here and you just grab them like this, you lay them out, Mine had eight, and you just, I use a pizza cutter. It seems like it's the easiest thing to do. I just kind of slice it. I slice it in fours. I get little, four little things there. So what you're going to do is you're going to wait until this gets bubbly again. It's already starting to simmer. And then we're just going to drop these little lumps of dough on top of the liquid here. And as it heats up, it's going to cook this dough and it's going to turn into a nice little dumpling. So pretty easy, pretty basic. I like it because it adds a little bit of uh, different flavors. It's nice to have that dumpling in this like chicken stew mixture. This stuff by the way, excellent uh, for leftovers. You can uh, freeze it, put it in the fridge, and especially in a cold winter's night. Nothing like some delicious stew. So there you go. So let me show you here. Oh, it's already bubbling a little. We're just going to take these little drops of dough and just drop them right in like that. Cover the top. They're going to expand a little bit as they heat up. So they're going to fill a whole top and that's okay. Now I'm just using one can here. Uh, I bought two cans, you know, just in case, or maybe for some leftovers. But yeah, depending on how much you like dumplings and how much liquid, that's why you need the extra liquid because the extra liquid now is going to be absorbed in these dumpling balls. So it's going to turn a lot thicker now. And then what I typically do is just take a spoon or a spatula and just kind of dunk them. Get them completely covered with the with the hot uh, chicken mixture there. That helps them cook as well. We don't want to like a uncooked doughy part. Just like that. 
Perfect. I still have it on high. We're going to put the lid on there. And now just keep an eye on it. You know, I, I'm going to give it at least a half hour. Um, you know, maybe all the way up to 45 minutes, an hour. It just depends how hot you can get your uh, slow cooker. We just want these to cook. And you'll know when they'll cook. We'll be back in a little bit and I'll show you how it looks like. So we'll just let, this, uh, let the slow cooker do its thing. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, it's been around a half hour. Here we go, guys. It's bubbling nice. You can see how thick uh, and how much that uh, dough expanded. So now we're just going to kind of, I like to put the dough on top. So I'll kind of move a few pieces to the side here. Whoops. So I can get in there where the good stuff is. Get a good uh, dose of some of that chicken. Just to show you here. It's kind of like a chicken stew. Ooh. There we go. And then add some dumplings, of course. A couple on top. Two or three. Second one here. Oh, it smells wonderful. Mm -mm. Let's see, dumpling. Put one more dumpling on there. Okay, and then all I let it cool a little bit because it's very hot. All I do now at the end is I just take a little bit of some parsley flakes, stick it on there, and this is ready to go. I'm going to let this cool just a little bit. And I'll be back in a second. We'll see how uh, everyone likes it. All right, here we are. It's been cooling for a few minutes. This is my daughter, Ava Grace. Say hi, Ava Grace. Hi. <laughs> Unfortunately, she can't try this, but I'm going to. Man, it looks absolutely delicious. Let me give it a shot here. Mmm, that looks good for Daddy. It looks good for Daddy? Uh-huh. You know, it is very good for Daddy. Wow, it's delicious. Man, I'm telling you guys, mmm, this is so good. I know it's probably not authentic chicken and dumplings, but it's my variation, and I love it. Let me try a little piece of a dumpling. Mmm. Mmm. That looks good for the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's always my favorite part. That's her favorite part. Well, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Please try the recipe. It's absolutely delicious. Click the link above to check out my website, ericsmokingbarbecue.com, and check out some of my other videos when you get a chance. Say goodbye, Ava Grace. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>